Guys, without further ado, why don't we get to the top four teams as chosen by the committee? They didn't seed all 16, just the top four. And so, again, without further ado, here we go and show you how it breaks down, beginning with the number one overall seed in this 16-team tournament. It is indeed South Dakota State. The Jacks beat defending FCS champion North Dakota State yesterday after a month off to win the Missouri Valley Football Championship. Jay, they ended the Bison's incredible reign and took the Dakota marker with them. Hey, they, they got the marker, but I think everybody right now is gasping. South Dakota State, the number one seed in the FCS playoffs. They haven't been the number one ranked team in the country all season long. I know there's some people scratching their head at this one there, but hey, I'm not going to take anything away from them. Jackrabbits, congratulations. You're going in the postseason with some momentum after that great victory yesterday versus the Bison. Indeed. All right, we'll talk about uh, whether or not North Dakota State gets in in just a bit. We get to the number two seed overall, and it's Sam Houston. The Bearcats wrapped up a perfect regular season Saturday, Dre, with a win over Incarnate Word. Yeah, it's no surprise. They seem to be in the playoffs just about every year. Casey Keller, the head coach there, 46 and 12 in his uh, at Sam Houston State. He is one heck of a coach. It's a multiple offense. They know how to attack a big, deep, big, aggressive defense that will come after you. This is no surprise to me. This is like home for Sam Houston. And they've got a quarterback, Eric Schmidt, that's in the running for a trophy that's almost as prestigious, Andre, as the one right behind you. They are the two seed overall. How about the three seed in the 16 team bracket? It is James Madison. Jay, the Dukes went unbeaten, won the CAA South Division title, but not the outright conference title. Man, you're talking about no respect at all. The number one ranked team in the country for a good portion of the season. They went to the championship game a year ago. They're still undefeated, but yet they're only a number three seed. I know that Coach Signetti and the Dukes can't be too happy. You're giving a team that's already motivated an extra chip on their shoulder. They're coming as just a three C, biggest shocker out there right now to me. And we will be joined by Coach Kurt Signetti coming up here in just a bit. They're the three seed, the four seed overall, Jacksonville State. How about the Gamecocks winning his program in FCS history? Andre, they played fall ball. They actually almost beat Florida State. Yeah, kind of fitting, Kevin, because they won the most games of anyone in the FCS, putting themselves out there all season long. They played 11, an 11-game schedule, winning nine of those. Zion Webb, their quarterback, had an outstanding year, throwing 11 touchdown passes to just seven interceptions. This is a, a team that's multifaceted. They can run it. They can throw it. Look out for Jacksonville State. Yeah, and Andre, committee chair Kyle Motes told us that the discussion that he had among the top four seeds was the longest discussion that his committee had among any of the conversations that they had here. Any issues for you with who is among the top four teams? I don't know. I mean, maybe what Jay alluded to with South Dakota State being uh, ranked number one ahead of uh, the, the others. But, um, you know, otherwise, I think it's some pretty some some teams that have been there year in and year out. But uh, that may be the only surprise. And again, Jason, motivation, as you said, for that James Madison team. Oh, the Dukes come in number three when they were the number one team in the country by all of uh, imagination, and they can't control who they play. Uh, we'll see. And for the first time in a long time, a uh, trip to Frisco, Texas, does not necessarily have to go through the Fargo Dome of North Dakota State. So we'll see what schools can take advantage of that. All right, so South Dakota State, Sam Houston, James Madison, Jacksonville State, the top Four seeds. When we come back, the drama really gets going. We will run through the entire 16 team bracket. And we're back on the 2021 FCS selection show. A look at Sam Houston. Bearcats back in the postseason for the first time since 2017. They scored 71 points in a game earlier this year. And how about Jacksonville State? Ninth OVC title overall, sixth in seven years. They've got sophomore safety Nicario Harper. OVC Defensive Player of the Year, waiting to hear their names called. Back with Jay Walker and Andre Ware. We are about to reveal the field of 16, the matchups coming your way. Let's get right to it. The drama comes to an end right now, and we show you the matchups beginning with 
The top portion of the bracket, all games to be played next Saturday. Game one, the overall number one seed. South Dakota State hosting Holy Cross at 3 Eastern. Andre's second straight Patriot League title for the Crusaders. Yeah, and 15 players named to all-conference teams. They've got a scrappy defense. They held Bucknell to less than one yard a carry in their matchup and intercepted five passes in that game. It's a team that's built on their defense. That really pays the way for them. But, boy, do they really have to step up against South Dakota State and the Jackrabbits because they will run fits around you. And, I mean, literally, they do it with a three-headed monster, Pierre Strong, Mark Gronkowski, the quarterback, and then Jordan Meacham, all averaging over five yards per carry. So this is a good one to get things started. The Holy Cross Conference Freshman of the Year, Matthew Sluka and company, as Andre said, have their work cut out. In our next matchup, 4 Eastern in Ogden, Utah, Weber State will host Southern Illinois. The Cardiac Cats won their fourth straight Big Sky title thanks to their third straight fourth quarter comeback yesterday. Jay, they get a Salukis team who scheduled Southeastern Louisiana at the last minute and then won a shootout. Yeah, and I think they were rewarded for their performance in getting that victory over the Lions. But talk about this going to Ogden, Utah. If you're Southern Illinois, you kind of like this matchup. You didn't know if you were getting in for sure. I think they were one of the teams that were on the bubble. Well, congratulations. So, Lucas, you all made it there. They lost three quarterbacks during the season, but they had the most impressive victory of the season, beating North Dakota State by 24 points. Coach Nick Hill has a good squad there. However, Weber, you call them the cardiac kids, four of their wins have been by five points or less. Jay Hill, get simple. Run the football with Dante McMillan. He's got five touchdowns on the season. A very balanced squad. Two of the best coaches you're going to see in all of FCS football. This is an interesting matchup. And more importantly, if you're going on the road, you may call it a winnable game. Well, the champions of the CAA, the Fighting Blue Hens of Delaware, are in. They will host Sacred Heart, 7 Eastern. Mark Nofri's team got a 29-yard TD pass from Marquez McCray to Nassim Brantley in overtime to win the NEC title. Jay Delaware, the champions from the CAA. Oh, Delaware head coach Dan Rocco know he has a pretty good football team there. The quarterback, Nolan Henderson, nine touchdowns, only two interceptions. Heisman, Andre, where you know if you can have that type of productivity in the postseason, you got a <laughs> chance at advancing your yes. football team. But one of the most talented players we're going to see is going to be running back Julius Chestnut from Sacred Heart. He gets it done. He averages 179 yards per game for the Pioneers, eight touchdowns. That's the matchup. How will they be able to run the football versus the boys from the CAA, the Delaware Blue Hens? Interesting matchup. And you can see there the Delaware team recognizing that they're in the field, who their matchup is. They'll take on Sacred Heart again next Saturday, 7 Eastern. Congratulations to the Fighting Blue Hens. Finally, the last matchup in the top portion of the bracket, 2 Eastern Saturday. Jacksonville State will entertain Davidson. The Wildcats clinched their first postseason berth since 1969. Andre, the Cats ground game averages close to 300 rushing yards per game. Yeah, they're scary when you look at them. Triple option is what they run. And the lefty, Tyler Phelps, who uh, he just kind of gets it done. Threw three touchdown passes against San Diego, who hadn't lost a conference game since 2015 to pull off that upset to propel Davidson. And then you look on the other side, Jacksonville State. We talked about them early. Coach John Grass, they're 9-2 and two overall record, 6-1 and one in conference. They get it done on the ground with Josh Samuel, Uriah West, both guys seven touchdowns and five respectively. But Zion Webb taking care of things over 1,500 yards through the air in that 11-game schedule. Jacksonville State, one to keep an eye on throughout the playoff. The number one team in America, James Madison, the three seed, will host a two o'clock kickoff against VMI. The key debts are headed to the FCS postseason for the first time in program history. Jay SoCon champs for the first time since 1977. Hey. Hats off. The te America's team right now in this FCS program uh, playoff is going to be the key debts for VMI. First time ever that they've made it to the postseason. And the head coach, Scott Walkenheim, fantastic job getting it done there. Despite losing a very talented quarterback, but the backup quarterback came in in one game as they needed. And we know about JMU.
JMU, unfortunately for the Cadets, it's going to be a tough road trip going to Harrisonburg, Virginia, because the Dukes are going to come out here ready to play one of the stingiest defenses in the country. They only allow nine points per game. Talented offense from VMI taking on a very, very proven and talented defense of James Madison. What a contest that's going to take place there in Virginia. Local teams there. Congratulations, Cadets. But you got a tough draw. It you got a tough draw. Jay saying Seth Morgan taking over for the injured Reese Udinsky has VMI in the field. At 4 Eastern, North Dakota will host Missouri State. The Fighting Hawks were ranked as high as number two at one point this season. Dre, the Bears clinched a share of the Missouri Valley Football Conference title after beating Youngstown State. How about Bobby Petrino in his first year? at the helm at Missouri State for the Bears, going five and four. We know we're going to see a pro-style offense with some spread concepts, and they get it done. They go three deep at running back, Jeremiah Wilson, Selden Manning, and Tobias Little, and then Jaden Johnson, the quarterback, over 50, 55%, over 1,000 yards and three touchdowns. Bobby Petrino's offense is going to be scary throughout the playoff. Now, North Dakota, they pulled off the biggest upset this year, Jay. They beat South Dakota State and uh, to get themselves in. So watch out for the Hawks in this in the playoffs as well. That's a fantastic matchup. Maybe the most tantalizing matchup of all the first round games comes your way. 3.30 Eastern from the Fargo Dome. North Dakota State home to Eastern Washington. The Bison, the defending champions, winners of eight of the last nine titles. Actually lost two games this year, Jay. And this is a rematch of the championship game from two years ago. Are, are you kidding me? These two teams are playing in the first round. Nobody's happy about this one. I'm telling you, except for the fans, you have to love it. You talk about the star power of North Dakota State taking on one of the most talented offensive squads in Eastern Washington, the Eagles. They may have the most talented quarterback in this whole play, playoffs in quarterback Eric Berrier. He can flat out get it done, and he's been a longtime winner there for the Eagles. But I know they have to be disappointed they're not hosting a game in lovely Cheney, Washington. Instead, they've got to go to Fargo, North Dakota, and we know the Bison do what the Bison do with head coach Matt Entz. Indeed, the defending champions, and again, so rare to see two losses in a season, but North Dakota State in the field hosting a game. Finally, noon Eastern to start the whole tournament off. The two seeds, Sam Houston, will host Monmouth. Legendary coach Kevin Callahan's team dominated number seven. Kennesaw State last weekend, Andre, en route to their second straight Big South title. Yeah, you look at Sam Houston State, Kevin, what they were able to do. They, 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 they seem like this is home for them. They beat three ranked teams this year going 6-0. and oh, You can make a case that they should have been ranked number one going into the playoff. Eric Smith, you mentioned him. 62% passer, over 2,000 yards in just six games. And get this one, Jay, 10.1 yards per completion with seven, 14 touchdown passes. Ramon Jefferson gets it done on the ground, over six and a half yards per carry, but they are stout on defense. And that'll be tough for Mount Mountmouth. The Hawks, who were 3-0, and they run a spread offense where they'll show you some pistols, some spread, open the field up. Jamon Fari and uh, and Romeo Holden, their backs, their two backs get it done. They like to come downhill and come at you. This is a great matchup. Great some, matchup. Some loaded teams in that portion of the bracket, and there you go. You can see the Monmouth watch party there. In South Jersey, the Hawks know that they're a part of this 16-team tournament and you know Jay as you look at the bottom portion of that bracket it's like congratulations congratulations to Sam Houston you're the two seed and if you win you get either the Bison or Eastern Washington <laughs> that's cold man it's I cold mean, blooded but the, the way it sets up no doubt I mean it is and, and that bottom half of the bracket is really tough so we talked about the number one team having a, a an easier ride South Dakota State no slight to the Jack Rabbits they deserve it but that bottom half is absolutely loaded. And that matchup in the first round between North Dakota State and Eastern Washington, are you kidding me? That should be a, a, a semifinal matchup, but we'll see it early. But there's some heartbreak going on right now, too. Now, let's not forget about that, Dre, Kevin. Some teams realized their numbers did not get called. And we should talk about those yeah. teams, and I'll let the committee chair talk about that. But Heartbreak Hotel for a couple programs.